for a moral life, natural inclinations. He talks of the intention of nature. He says that there are axioms that lead to social virtue and good government. He says there is intuitive evidence that I cannot resist. He says that conscience is the law of God written in the heart, which he cannot disobey without acting unnaturally, contrary to nature. He says that moral judgment and conscience grow to maturity from an imperceptible seed planted in us by the Creator. Natural proclivities. He says by an impulse of nature we venture to judge for ourselves. So his appeal again is to natural proclivities. Now the first principles of ethics that he um, derives in this way or thinks of in these terms are very general. Some things merit approval, others merit blame. All right, there's a difference between right and wrong. First principle, you need that somewhere. Uh, again, we ought to use the best means we can to be informed of our duty. We have moral responsibility to find out. Um, those are the sorts of things he regards as first principles, and it's in the light of those that we make our judgments about particular cases. Now, it's in that context that he criticizes Hume. He says that Hume's theory of ideas led from the subjectivity of secondary and primary qualities to the subjectivity of beauty and of right and wrong. Hume's ethical subjectivism. But his, uh, his own view sounds remarkably like Hume in some ways. He says that feeling, okay, that's the emotive, feeling and judgment, that's the rational, are inseparable in, in giving moral approval, making moral judgment. Both reason and feeling. Now, that's what Hume said. One cannot replace the other. One is not reducible to the other. When I approve of something, I'm consciously making a moral judgment. It's a judgment. It's not just an emotional response. Um... But the difference is that uh, the judgment is not just about the facts of the case, as it is for Hume, with his empirical approach to consequences, his utility approach. What reason does is to go beyond facts, to exploring the relationship between ideas, agreement or disagreement is what's involved in a judgment. So when on the basis of a principle like um, um, we should prefer a greater good to a less, on the basis of something like that I judge that there is greater good to one alternative than the other, you see, it logically follows that I should prefer that one with the greater good. And so, um, accordingly, the uh, moral judgments, real judgments, based on intuitive principles. Well, um, that's not as complete as I wish he had made it but it's as complete a picture as I've found in Locke at this juncture, uh, in Locke at Reed.
at this juncture. Comment? Question? Reason and feeling differing from Hume in the role of reason. Um, okay, I guess we'll have to save this um, comment about Kant for next time, which simply means it'll give us opportunity to recoup our awareness of the Scottish realists. <laughs>